You're listening to China Manufacturing Decoded from the Sophie's Group. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. Adrian here from Sophie's hosting today. Andrew Amernovin, our head of reliability and testing, is here. He's got a long history of manufacturing experience, and this is what we're tapping into today in today's topic. So, hi, Andrew. Welcome back. Hey, Adrian. Good to be here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. And you? Just fine. I think that this is going to be an interesting topic of discussion for many. Yeah. We're going to be talking about how to protect PCBs for various reasons. And I think this could be an important thing for those who are in the market trying to figure out what's the best way to protect their PCBs. Mm. Well, I think a lot of our listeners are bringing electronic products or devices to market, or maybe they're already selling them. And it's probably fair to say that a lot of the products that we support our clients on in terms of design development, manufacturing, do include PCBs or or PCBAs if they're fully assembled together, right? And so when we're talking about protecting the PCB in your product or the PCBA, so I think it's important to understand how to protect what really is one of the key components of your products. And so let's start by just reminding everybody, what's the PCBA? Why is it so important? Yeah, so uh, PCBA is is pretty much the heart of the electronics. Is This is a material that the whole idea is that these um, PCBs contain all the traces for electronics, the grounding, the power, the voltage and the current, everything that actually powers your electronic components on the PCB. And it basically con- contains the, the heart of your electronics. The, all mm-hmm. the functions and everything that happens in your electronics happens because of what's on that uh, PCB. And it is critical to protect it depending on what the product is, the, what the product use case is per se, and uh, what the life uh, that the product is being designed for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the functionality of the product is relying on, you know, the the processors, the whatever other small electronic components are attached to the PCB. So without that, it's just not going to work. So when we talk about it being critical, it really is. So it makes sense then to protect it, but... How do we actually protect this important component? Well, maybe we should say why we should protect it. I mean, there, there are reasons, right? Uh, and and I think that uh, one reason is that sometimes the product that the client has needs to be waterproof, mm. for example, or dust proof or dirt proof. Um, and in these kind of situations, you you need to make sure that you either apply something on top of the uh, the PCB or you create um, a situation where it prevents uh, from water and dust and dirt getting there, right? So maybe you create some kind of enclosure, maybe uh, you seal the product in a box. You know, all of these are uh, reasons why you want to make sure that your PCB is protected. Yeah because you really need it to work and not some of the time, all of the time. Okay. That's a good point. So, so we know why. Okay. Now my understanding is there are some different ways, some different methods we can use to actually protect PCBs when they're in a product, right? So you're going to go through these and talk about what is the method, the features, benefits, and uh, maybe give a bit of insight into the costs as well, because if you're if you're trying to bring products to market, you're going to want to know roughly what sort of uh, costs you're playing with as well, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that or maybe we should talk about the one that is most common, okay, or commonly used, and that is the conformal coating. So conformal coating actually uh, is um, the quickest way for our client who are not familiar with this uh, term is that conformal coating is something like a varnish or like a 
more like a clear nail polish (laughs) that goes that goes over your uh, PCB components and and basically seals completely uh, from water and moisture and humidity. So so that's the basic uh, reason why you want to do that. But there are a lot of benefits on doing this. You know, you're you're doing it because you want to protect it from environment like moisture, humidity, water, all sorts of things that can 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 cause uh, component corrosion or shorts. Um, you're improving the reliability because there won't be any more shorts because of water mm-hmm. and dust and dirt. And then you're probably improving the performance as a result because what would happen if water got in there, right? So base, basically you'll have shorts or, you know, the life of the product would be reduced or you'll have intermittent issues uh, and costs as a result of trying to um, repair and understand why this thing is shorting or having problems. So all of these are the benefits, right? And then, of course, um, you still need to uh, determine what kind of conformal coating you need. That is something that actually uh, we're not going to cover too much in detail, Mm -hmm. but uh, there are various kinds. For example, some that are really, um, you know, as soon as you apply it, they are dried and solid and very hard. And then there are some that are going to be more like a silicone, somewhat soft, but still clear uh, and, and flexible. So they are, you know, depending on type of PCB you have, type of product you have, and uh, how you want to, uh, what is the best choice of material for your conformal coating is, is you can choose. But one other thing that I think would be a good important thing to talk about is the uh, manufacturing hurdles and and things that mm-hmm. are happening nowadays because of um, you know geopolitical issues that are happening in the world. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, as we hear in the news every day, and, and these things are causing all kinds of supply changes challenges. Uh, you know, you're not getting uh, what you need uh, uh, from your supplier. You're not getting it on time or you're not getting at all. Um, cost considerations, of course, you know, these these costs are um, increasing even on conformal coding. And, you know, they add up you know, depending on how much need you have. If you have a lot of uh, PCBs, uh, uh, you know, like let's say you got rack, rack mounted motherboards each you know half a meter long thousands of uh uh you know components and th- that could be pretty expensive uh, uh product in terms of conformal coding if you're going if you're going to go overseas and then uh, hopefully there are no issues with the supply chains but if there are supply chain issues then you're going to uh notice uh the cost increase and and of course environmental regulations you know each country has their own compliance and requirements that you have to make sure to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think conformal coding, in my opinion, is the best method for majority of electronics uh, that they just want to pretty much seal it from moisture, water, dust, and dirt, you know, and they, they want to make sure that uh, it basically improves the life of the product, the reliability of the product. And I think that's the best choice. However, Mm. there are other options as well. For example, let's say uh, you have a product that uh, needs to be protected from impact, you know, and Mm -hmm. uh, well, then you you need to make sure that the enclosure is made in in such a way that actually protects your PCB, right? So maybe the enclosure would have somewhat hardened material uh if if that's the impact that you're trying to protect from like something something like a hammer hitting is not going to hurt the electronics imagine like for example a tank that would be a extreme example but like a tank you know uh if a bullet hits it you want to make sure it's bulletproof right so there are electronics in there you don't want any of it to be damaged you want the the tank still operate um but then you might also have an electronic that want to be protected by an enclosure that is more softer, rubbery material uh, that, you know, if if it falls, it kind of bounces around, right? So so depending on 
the use case uh, mm-hmm. of the, the product that you have. You could come up with different kind of enclosures to protect it. But then you could also do something that a lot of times some designers may not think about is that you could actually use components that are either water and dust and humidity sealed type of uh, components um, and or uh, you can come up with components that are more reliable, more resistant for shorts. So so there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do on that side as well. The choice of the components that you use in your product, and then um, uh, other, the other thing you could do is um, seal your product. You know, uh, for example, let's say all you need to do is uh, put your put your product. It's PCB a inside an enclosure and then completely seal it so that it's uh, basically water and humidity proof, you know, IP67, for example, or, or even higher. And and uh, you could do an at- atmospheric pressure test and make sure there's absolutely no air is getting in and out of that. And, and that will be the ultimate, uh, of course, uh, mm-hmm. PCB protection. Then, you know, there are other methods, you know, you could uh, potty, um, you could put some kind of silicone pot all around the, the holes and, and the areas that you think could be sealed. Maybe it's not completely, you know, waterproof, but it's pretty close to it uh, that, that you can seal with potty and so forth. But mm-hmm. uh, aside from all of this, you really need to design it in a way that your product is going to uh, be protected for for all of these unforeseen situations, and that what we do uh, in Agilian very well is 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 called uh, DFM, Design for Manufacturability. But also there is uh, other things that that we do during the uh, Design for Development. So we do like Design for Assembly, Design for uh, Testing, Design for uh, quality. So all of these things, you know, design for X, that if you do, uh, one of them is definitely going to take care of or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, pay attention to how to protect the PCBA. Well, I suppose that comes kind of under design for real reliability, right? Uh, of course. It, yeah. it, I mean, it depends on what's important on the project. Sometimes mm-hmm. uh, manufacturing is more important. Sometimes reliability is important. But absolutely, you could uh, put the uh, DFM under manufacturing and or uh, development, and then you can also the whole thing basically falls on top uh, under reliability, right? So if if something doesn't work uh, according to specification, then it's not reliable. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned DFX because these are kind of like approaches that you, as the person or the business that's bringing a product to market, are going to select. What's what what your most important requirements are pretty early during the project, and then you're going to select an approach which is then followed through the design necessarily. So, if it's important for you to be bringing a product that is very reliable to market, then designing that reliability into the product, i.e., using some of these methods methods that you've been talking about, makes a lot of sense. You know, like if it's a uh, You've seen those military laptops, which are in like a big, heavy, rugged plastic case, and you open up the case and and Mm -hmm. the laptop is kind of built into the inside of the case. So you could probably throw this thing off a cliff and just go get it at the bottom of the cliff and just open it up. And of course, the laptop won't be smashed because it's totally protected. And I mean, that's been designed to be rugged or reliable. and, And as you can see, it's got that very high level of exterior protection i do have a question about the components that you were talking about because just if we are selecting components that are naturally reliable so we know that they've you know got those extra maybe design or features or it's off the shelf and it's been tested for reliability and you know that but we're adding those to a pcb so we're talking about small electronic components that we're adding to a PCB, even if the component itself is reliable, isn't one reason to protect the PCB to actually protect all the connections that are going to be put in? So when it goes through the SMT machine, for example, which is going to place all of the components onto the board and then 
the solder gets put in place and hardened and then they're connected. But it's those connections that you want to protect as well, right? Not just the component. Oh, absolutely. And I and I and I think that is a great point because your example of a hardened and rugged laptop is an excellent example actually for the whole thing. Because even if the outside looks rugged, mm. but what if you know, as you mentioned, you know, as if if the PCB, the components on that PCB are not rugged, rugged or if the solder joints are not rugged, yeah. uh, then, you know, as soon as the laptop drops, something is going to give up and, and you're not going to have a laptop that's working. So in those laptops, the way the whole process works is that they are hardened from inside out mm-hmm. first. You, you get products uh, and components that are hardened uh, in terms of uh, uh, drop and um, uh, humidity and and making sure that they can handle uh, a lot of humidity, high high temperatures, low temperatures, and and of course, drop tests, right? Uh, And on top of that, uh, the manufacturing process ensures that the type of material that is used for PCB is not going to be brittle, but at the same time, it's not going to be too much flexible because both could have issues. You, if you got uh, a PCB that is too much flex- flexible, uh, all the components could pop out of it. They call that popcorn effect. You know, kind of like mm-hmm. the PCB bends and then the solder joint gives up and the, the, the component basically pops off the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's one way you can, de- can definitely damage, especially... Uh, in the drop situation. And then, um, so so material that you use uh, for the use case is important, but then uh, the solder type, uh, the temperature of the solder, uh, the entire uh, process of pick and place uh, and component itself and the packaging that you choose that makes the, the component a lot more solid. Uh, and then the packaging helps the component kind of sit in place and not move around. And then on top of all of that, when you do conformal coating, for example, that really bonds everything together and making making sure that that component is not going anywhere. Uh, and then be, because you have a conformal coating, then, okay, moisture, humidity definitely is not getting there. And then you put from inside out, you have uh, hardened it, and now you've got the case and the shell um, and that makes the product really rugged against any kind of impact, drop, or, you know, um, maybe you might say it's battle hardened, you know, if, if it's a, if, if it's a, a type of the laptop that needs to be used in the, in the battle ground, for example, mm. that was a good example. Well, yeah, I, it came to mind. I'm glad it was a good example, but we're trying to paint a picture here for the listener, right? So I think I think that really helps. Okay, that makes sense from looking at the different ways to protect. So we've got on the actual PCB itself, then we've got sort of external and the way that we're thinking of designing the product to be reliable in the first place. I get that. Shall we talk about costs a little bit? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, obviously the cost is just going to be some kind of ex- estimate here. We we don't really have the exact cost. Uh, sure. To get the exact cost, of course, are, you know, we have a whole uh, supply chain department that can uh, contact different suppliers in China. Mm-hmm. And we're able to go and audit these suppliers and um, based on the requirements for design. And then make sure that not only we find the right supplier, uh, the qualified supplier, but also the right cost. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and we actually hold meetings on those uh, with the supply chain chain team. And but you know, just comparing, you know, costs. For example, conformal coding. What I found online, and again, this is just an estimate I found online. We're we're not an expert, mm-hmm. and I didn't consult our. Uh, uh, purchasing department, but um, you can um, do cons- uh, conformal coding from two cents to ten cents per square inch of a PCB. Now, again, 
if you got small areas to do, you know, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, right? But the more volumes you add and, and the more uh, PCBs you're going to be doing this, you could get a, a much better deal on mm-hmm. component cost. Um, but now if you try to compare that to some kind of gasketing, you know, gasketing is is when you seal it using rubbers, right? Yeah. Uh, like when you when you put rubber in between the, uh, you know, uh, wherever that you're closing enclosure, and then you you're trying to make sure that the rubber protects protects from water getting in. Yeah. Then so, you, then it'll be screwed as well, probably. Yeah. Exactly. Or maybe it'll be glued, yeah. but you've got that rubber gasket then behind where it's being sealed as an extra um, right layer of protection. Yeah. Right. So if you did gasketing as as opposed to conformal coating gasketing would be like half the price mm. so but then again between you and i you know it would not protect your pcba directly it right. would be like going around it yeah so i i prefer conformal coating to be honest mm. um but if you thinking about okay uh as an example that we just talked about you know uh, like a like a battle hardened, <laughs> you know, laptop. If you think mm-hmm. about it that way, then the costs are high because you're not just looking at enclosure, right? You're looking at conformal coding, PCB components, better components, uh, better design in terms of DFM. And then at the same time, you are uh, looking into a better con- uh, con- enclosure, something that is going to protect it, not, not only from IP, water, dust and dirt, but also, um, protected from impact. So I think that will be the probably the most expensive if you go that route. But mm-hmm. then uh, in terms of benefit, that would be the best benefit as well. Right, right. But yeah, but, but designing a product to be highly water resistant is not just the PCB. You're talking about designing all aspects of it from the very start. So I can understand why that would be more expensive. Yeah, exactly. I think like, for example, let's say if you got iWatch, right? Um, Yeah, you could definitely design it so that uh, water doesn't get in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then what about, uh, what about the impact? For example, if, if that watch hits the wall while you have it in your hand, you know, uh, what about uh, the glass on the watch? Uh, how hard should that be to handle the scratches and the the accidental hit on on your wrist to to somewhere? So yeah, so I think that you have to kind of look at the protection as a whole, yeah, and then determine what is it that you're trying to protect the whole product, or you just pro- protect only the PCBA. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. While you might not need an extremely high level of protection, on the other hand, what is having a more reliable PCB just alone worth to you when you're thinking about your products. If you think about the dangers that it might face when it's in users' hands, what is not having a lot of product returns or not having a lot of angry customers worth to you in comparison to the cost of, say, uh, putting a conformal coating onto your PCBAs once they've been assembled you know I I guess it's going to be done in the same kind of process isn't it Andrew so they come out of the the oven the PCBs the solder is all hardened once they've cooled a bit and then they'll be run through the machine to have the coating put on them as well for that extra layer of protection yeah so there are various you know processes for applying conformal coating depending on the size of the PCB. Okay. You know, there might be like small PCBs that they just dip it into the conformal coating. And there might be bigger uh, PCBs that uh, they can just spray like a paint and um, and then kind of let it dry and then spray a few more coating and so forth. Uh, so so th- there are diff- different ways of applying the conformal mm-hmm. coating. And then also curing. There mm-hmm. are different ways of curing. Some of them are just air dry, quick dry some of them uh they have to be oven dried uh, i don't know if there are any uv version or not but uh, but yeah definitely there are, there are different uh manufacturing process for application of the conformal coating uh and, and they're getting even more com- complex nowadays but uh 
I'm not necessarily an expert in the actual process, but I know that there are, there are various ways to to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So yeah, that's that's an intro into PCB protection, but also you've mentioned making products more reliable in general, which we can all agree is important for most of the electronic products in some way or another. Obviously, if we look at my example of the rugged military laptop that you can throw off a cliff, we're going to the extreme. But you've also mentioned things like smartwatches. I mean, generally, they're going to need to at least be somewhat water resistant, i.e. you could probably, you know, go in the shower at least with them. That's not as rugged yeah. as a military laptop, but that still requires that level of reliability um, and ruggedness and water protection. And, you know, protecting the PCB also comes into that. So I think this has been helpful. And if you want to know more, you can get in contact with us. We're always happy to answer any questions about developing and producing products. And of course, Andrew will be on hand to answer all of your questions about <laughs> reliability in particular, won't you, Andrew? Absolutely. It's been a great awesome. um, uh, session here. I, I thank you. And yeah, um, uh, I ask all of our clients, if they have any questions, definitely get in touch with us. Thanks again for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Sophie's Group. We're on a mission to provide you with everything you need to manufacture effectively in Asia, including inspections, auditing, new product development support, contract manufacturing, 3PL warehousing and fulfillment, and much, much more across Asia's key manufacturing areas. Visit us at sofeast.com, that's S-O-F-E-A-S-T dot com, to learn more and get help. If you've enjoyed the podcast today, please do rate, review and share, because it will really help others discover us too.